Good afternoon. You wouldn't believe it by standing outside, but it is actually December 4th, 2012. Um, it's a beautiful blue sky, uh, sunny day here in central New York. Uh, very unusual for this time of year. And I figured I would get out here and enjoy it. Uh, it's about 60 degrees uh, in the shade and probably nicer outside. So anyway, uh, just wanted to kind of give everyone a status update on the electric vehicle. And in specific, the motor has arrived. Uh, this actually came in last Thursday, uh, which was remarkable because they shipped it on Monday of last week. And so it arrived. I did have some trouble with the uh, Fed uh, FedEx trucker who basically was convinced that he couldn't get his big uh, semi uh, down my little side street here to deliver it directly to my house. Uh, I tried to convince him that I've had batteries delivered and the motor was delivered here before um, in such a fashion and it wasn't a big deal, but he was having none of it. So I ended up meeting him in a parking lot of a local um, business that had shipping docks and the like, and we went from there. So anyway, the motor's here. I have not opened it yet. And so in theory, inside that uh, relatively small box, is the Warp 9 with that's been rebuilt at Warfield Electric um, to factory refurbished specifications uh, with the new brushes. So we'll get that opened up today, and that's kind of the uh, the project on this beautiful day, and we'll see what happens. Um, and uh, one other thing that I wanted to point out while we're looking at it here is the initial battery pack charge is after the batteries have had a chance to settle, we're at 202.3. Um, that is approximately 3.37 volts per cell, uh, is where they settled out at, or whatever that means. Um, but I wanted to point out that the, the cell up front, the problem cell that we had pushed all the way up to 4.2 or so, settled down to 3.444 um, and then just as a reference one of the other cells that uh, was nearby here so we can get a good reading on it it's a little tricky come here you get those cells in there so it's 3.39 so really they're pretty darn close um, you know even though that one looked like it was all out of, out of whack and um, you know, really high. It's settled back down with the rest of them, um, you know, kind of as expected. And uh, I'm not really worried about it. I don't believe any damage occurred to the cell uh, during my big <laughs> uh, constant voltage test. Um, and yeah, anyway. So the results of all that... Um, battery testing was simply that I'm going to end up um, doing a constant current charge and then just cutting it off and saying okay good enough we're at uh, I believe 210 volts uh, for the whole pack it was kind of when it hit that mark that had been fully charged uh, up to the you know about 180 amp hours into the cells and you know that's good enough um, the cells can take more, but there just isn't much power there, and it takes a lot of extra time, stresses the cells, etc. So, anyway, um, also just wanted to point out that this is the cell that I was testing uh, during all that, uh, that I logged on the laptop and so forth. And I know the JLD doesn't really, or the JLD, the um, Power Lab doesn't actually show up on camera, but it's showing 3.3. 8 volts right now um, and so that's kind of kind of where that one settled and then we're going to very carefully move these leads so as not to blow up my power lab again just to another kind of random cell here <clears throat> and this one's showing 3.42 um, so you know they're kind of all over the place but I s expect that with a bottom balanced pack and um, slightly different capacities between each of the cells, 
that's that's where they settled out <clears throat> and they will continue to settle um, I did hit them with the charger probably about three or four hours ago um, just briefly you know to make sure everything's all topped off and then let it settle again and um, you know during that time it brought the total amp hours up a bit uh, let's see where we're at now So yeah, 196. Uh, I'm just not showing from the camera. There we go. 196.0 uh, amp hours into these cells, and um, again, that's not terribly alarming um, based on what these cells are. Uh, they're they're rated for 180 nominal, but if you look at the spec sheets that came with the cells, each one of these tested to between um, 190 and 200 amp hours. And that was when they were brand new, uh, a good year and a half ago, before I ran them in the car um, and put lots of miles on them. So 190 is, or 196 even, it isn't really that uh, extreme, um, considering that they are fully charged at this point, and um, the whole pack is at, at as much power as it is going to happen. And I probably will not be putting that much into it in the future, but. It's a good baseline to, to see what 100% state of charge really is. So, anyway, on to bigger and better things. So, as you can see, we've got the motor um, <clears throat> started to pull apart, and I kind of wanted to go through the unboxing um, just to kind of give everyone the Christmas morning feel of opening a new package. I know it's pretty exciting, but uh, anyway, here we go. Shaky cam and everything. Alright, so just to kind of see how these motors are packed, which I think is kind of fascinating. So it's got this big layer of formed foam encased in plastic, which kind of makes a shape there. And there she is! Securely fastened within uh, <laughs> lots of the cardboard on the sides. It's looking Brand new, no longer EVTV green. Um, looks like they even painted the grill or replaced the grill with new stuff. Um, I had the black, um, hammered black that I'd painted on my grill that was on there here before. And uh, yeah, it pretty much looks like a brand new motor. Um, <laughs> it actually even smells new, like I can smell the paint. <laughs> it's just shiny and new. So, anyway, we'll get the. Uh, Cardboard out of here. Um, there it is. So, you know, a little warp nine that could. So, <clears throat> I'm going to get this pried out of here and put onto my lift. Uh, it's kind of a little uh, floor jack with a special adapter on it that allows me to position the motor underneath reasonably easily. Um, everything's relative, of course, when you're dealing with something this heavy. But, uh, yeah, so we'll get this pried out and mount it on there, and I'll be right back. Alright, so this is the Warp 9 motor, now strapped to the special rig on the uh, floor jack. And uh, what this is, is a little metal assembly that I got from AutoZone that's actually used for, I think, motorcycles. Um, so you can put a motorcycle on there and then strap it down and kind of adjust it. Um, but it kind of worked out well for this because there's nice rubber um, covered iron here <laughs> uh, that the motor can rest on and uh, it can be very well supported. Um, what's also nice about it is that this particular assembly can be rotated and uh, you know just spin it around and that way, and then it can be tilted a little bit back and forth, um, which allows the motor to be positioned exactly where I need it to mate up with the transmission. So I'm hoping that this little combination is going to give me what I need uh, to kind of get it up in the car smoothly and uh, not cause me lots of pain and suffering. <laughs> um, so on this end, of course, is the drive end. And this is where we'll be mounting uh, that spacer ring and uh, the transmission adapter plate. And of course, that's also where we will be putting the um, 
uh, taper lock adapter um, for the flywheel. So, all that stuff <laughs> has been sitting here waiting to be reassembled for the motor to return, and uh, we'll get that put back on. So, while I've got the motor down here and I'm looking at it, I just wanted to try to shine the light in here to see if we can see anything. It's a very difficult angle, and of course the camera isn't the highest resolution ever. Um, but you can see that the commutator is extremely shiny. Uh, it does have a little bit of patina on it. Uh, just looks like they, they ran it in a little bit. Um, these are the new brushes. Uh, you can see that there's black straps on the brushes that look like they're, they're encased in something, maybe like a heat shrink uh, or a they're not exposed metal anyway, which is kind of nice. Um, and everything else just looks shiny and new in there. So uh, I'm assuming that I need to run this motor for a while on a low voltage setup uh, with low amps in order to get these brushes seated completely before I put it in the car. Um, I'm going to contact uh, George Hamstra and everyone else, uh, Hunter and uh, Hannah and so forth from NetGain, and just kind of ask them, you know, how long should I burn it in? Um, does it need to at this point? You know, are they factory radius for these brushes? Because I, I don't know. Um, so I don't want to <laughs> obviously break my new motor again. So I'm going to take every precaution necessary to ensure that doesn't happen. So. Anyway, I'm going to contact them, and I'll be back with an update when I'm ready to start putting this sucker together or burning in the brushes, whichever comes first. Take care, and have a nice night.